Hi gang, Rob here. It is the afternoon of 20 December 2017 coming to you with a From the Sharpening Bench video on a brand new knife from Spyderco. <clears throat> and rather an exciting one, I think. This is the new, for 2017, Spyderco Shaman. Check it out. Spyderco CPMS 30V, and it's made in Golden, Colorado, USA Earth, designed by the old man, Sal Glasser. <clears throat> so, what is the Shaman? Well, it kind of looks familiar, doesn't it? It does to me. But it's like familiar from five different directions. So let's just kind of uh, let me sort of run you over the blade and the handle and give you the particulars and then I'll try to characterize it a little bit. <clears throat> We've got a leaf shaped blade of S30V, a very high saber grind. I think you can see where the grind starts. Blade length is 3.58 inches. Stock thickness is 150 thousandths. The handle is 4.42 inches in length and it is contoured G10 satin finished. The locking mechanism is the vaunted Spyderco compression lock. And it's on washers, the same pivot setup as a paramilitary 2, save the stop pin, which is floating, as you can see. No fasteners to mess up your action. And then the construction of the knife is two body screws into a stonewashed stainless steel backspacer. Nested liners just like a PM2 and the clip from the, oh gosh, it looks like a stonewashed Endura clip, doesn't it? So I said it looks familiar from five different directions. It kind of does. See, if you like the sage but it's too small, there's your sage blade, but almost three and five eighths inches long. If you like the Mannix handle shape, but you're not a big fan of the ball bearing lock, well, here you go, and you get some contouring to boot. If you love the Paramilitary 2 and its compression lock, but you want something a little more robust, here you go. It's just, it's like a classic Spyderco. When you look at it, you think it's probably existed for 10 or 15 years, but it hasn't. And I think it fills a nice hole in Spyderco's lineup. Um, you know, it seems like there's not much new here, but it's new. I really like it. Uh, it reminded me of another knife when I took it out of the box. And this one belongs to my sharpening customer, Jim. It'll be on its way today, Jim. It sort of reminds me of a Benchmade. It reminds me a lot of the Presidio 2. Both standard mechanisms for each company, but in sort of a hard use field knife folder, which is pretty cool. Now, the Presidio 2, different construction than the Shaman, uh, black and steel liners with hard anodized aluminum scales. I think the blade's a little longer on the Presidio. Let's see. Oh boy, they're about the same. <clears throat> like the stock thickness is the same but both just a little heavier than you're used to seeing from their respective companies um, while we're talking about heavier let's let's go to the blade now this one I sharpened at 17 degrees per side so basically I use the same uh, edge geometry that I do on a native <clears throat> which is kind of a chunky blade and thickness behind the edge, which I don't like on the native because it's a short, stubby blade. That thing ought to be a skinny slicer. This is a heavy-duty blade. I don't mind this geometry at all. Um, and you'll notice that my edge bevel kind of thickens a little bit. It widens out as it approaches the tip because we have a very robust tip on this knife which I kind of like. I like a lot about it. I like the finish. Sort of a 
coarse speckled stone wash. It's going to hide a lot of stuff as you work this knife. Um, ergonomics, let's see. The forward, the forward choil grip is superb in the saber grip. And it's kind of neat. Look how long that run of jimping is. No matter which finger groove you, you, you employ, your thumb lands naturally on jimping. Really good. The overhand pinch grip, really, really nice. The hammer grip works in both locations. I, I always love a hammer grip. I can come forward and my thumb sort of wraps around the front of the handle and lies safely on the ricasso. This does. The draw cut grip, really nice. About anywhere you want to do it. And the reverse grip, primo. They just kind of nailed it. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm going to give this knife three hits, okay? And the first one is that it uses the same pivot mechanism as the paramilitary too, which means it has a bushing that's really not a bushing. It really doesn't control uh, the pivot tightness dimension very well. This knife needs to be adjusted to be right. Um, and I don't know it's almost free but it can't be any freer than that right now without side play it'll break in and get better but the, you know that pivot has never been great <laughs> um, so I, <clears throat> I kind of wish they'd just go to a standard adjustable pivot make it work like a sage too you know uh, you know this is going to vary from example to example so so that's one negative another one is now this doesn't bother me but i know it'll bother some of you guys to have that big chunk of blade tank sticking out over the handle but because it's rounded it's really not a problem slipping past it uh, so here's my second thing. Look in the blade well at that backspacer, would you? Good gracious. It looks like something I cut out on, on my bandsaw and threw in the stone washer. My good. It looks like something cold steel would put in an early production <clears throat> issue of a new model. It's freaking hideous in there. And then here's what's going to bother a lot of you right-handers. If you use your index finger to release the compression lock and you bury it pretty deep into that finger relief, what's going to happen when the knife closes is uh, it's going to hit your finger. There is a lot of that self-guard sticking up in that, <clears throat> in that lock relief. Um, you can get good at it. You sort of get your finger out of the way at the last second. Of course, you have to get it closed. But, you know, you can do it. It's just, it's just a bad, a little bad engineering feature. I mean, how hard would it have been to make that, that relief a little less deep, make the handle a little broader, make the self-guard a little shorter, just to open that up all the way? <clears throat> that will bother people. I, I, I know it will. But as a left-hander, and you know, I, I can use a compression lock just fine. I sort of anchor my fingers on the clip when it's over here, but it's not because this is a customer knife. And you know, my thumb is just catching the top of that tab. So as it closes, yeah, it's going to hit me a little, but not, not as bad as for a right-hander. But that's it, guys. Other than that, what I see here is a model for Spyderco that's gonna it's gonna an answer some little nagging concerns about a couple different models. <clears throat> guys are gonna gravitate toward this, and what I see is a is a is a test bed for lots of different handle materials, lots of blade steels. Um, it's just a it's a great style. 
Um, and it's not super heavy at only uh, only 5.2 ounces for a, for a heavily built compression lock holder um, I don't think that's too heavy centering on this one's pretty good so I look for a lot of variations of the shaman to come from Spyderco in the coming years I don't think this is going to be discontinued anytime soon Maybe if I pick one of these up, we'll do a little long-term review. I just thought you'd like to see this. and uh, If you're thinking about buying it and you sort of <laughs> like to have my opinion before you do, I know there are three of you out there that do that. Um, thumbs up on the Shaman. Absolutely thumbs up. That's all for this one. Hey, five days till Christmas, guys. Have a merry and blessed one with your family. And remember your Savior, Jesus Christ. That's all for this one. Grace to you and peace. From God our Father and the birthday boy. <laughs> and remember, the word is sharp.